Hello again. In this video, we're going to do a simple project to learn BitLogic instructions. At the beginning, we'll have a short review of previous videos. Then we'll explain BitLogic instructions. These instructions are simple. Finally, a project will be defined to sort boxes, based on their height in factory IO software. We'll write its program using BitLogic instructions, and test it as well. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content. I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's have a short review of previous videos. Until now, we learned ArsLogix 500 software. This software is used to configure and program some Allen Bradley controllers like Micrologix and SLC 500 family. Also, we used the ArsLogix Emulate 500 software to test programs, without any real controllers. Then, we explained how ArsLogix 5000 software can be connected to a real PLC, via a serial port, or an Ethernet module. This software supports some Allen Bradley controllers, like Control Logix and Compact Logix family. After that, we introduced Factory IO software. This software can connect to controllers and simulate an industrial process. If you don't have any processor, you can use ArsLogix Emulate 5000 software to create a virtual PLC station. Also, in the previous video, an HMI screen is designed by Factory Talk Software, to monitor and control the PLC program. After now, I'll prefer to use my controller and Factory IO software, but if you don't have any controller, you can use the second way to test your programs. Now, Let's back to ArsLogix 5000 software. We learned how configure a PLC station, under I.O. configuration. Also, under the main task, here, we wrote and tested some simple program, using a real or virtual controller. As you know, here are all instructions that can be used in our programs. These instructions are divided into several categories. In this video, Let's have a short introduction to bit instruction, and then, define and do a simple project using factory IO. Let's start with these three instructions, which have been used before. Examine on, examine off, and output energize. As you know, if I press the start push button, then the electrical power will reach a digital input. If I used its address for this examine on instruction, or normally open contact, CPU will close this contact. Thus, in the program, the virtual power can reach the output energize instruction. If I use an output address for this instruction, then the CPU will turn on its connected device, like this signal lamp. But, the examine off instruction works inversely, in normal condition, this normally close contact past the virtual power, thus the connected signal lamp, will be on. But, if I press this push button, the electrical power will reach the digital input, if I use its address for this contact, then CPU open this contact, which make to cut the virtual power path, and turn off the output. Note that, at the beginning, PLC looks at each input module to determine if it is on or off, and saves its information in a data table, for use in the next step. This makes the process faster and avoids cases, where an input changes from the start to the end of the program. Then, PLC executes its program once time, from the first rung to last, using only the memory copy of all inputs. When program scan completes, Outputs are updated using the temporary values in memory. After that, 
usually PLC do some tasks, like check communication request and housekeeping. Then PLC restarts the cycle, which is called scan cycle. Well, let's see what are latch and unlatch instructions. We've explained the output energize instruction, right now. So, in the first rung, based on the input state, the output has two states, on or off. In the second rung, the output latch instruction is a retentive output instruction, that is used to maintain, or latch an output. If this output is turned on, it will stay on even if the status of the input logic, that caused the output to energize, becomes false. So, the second output will remain in a latched on condition, until an unlatch instruction with the same reference tag, is energize. Well, what is the one shot instruction? This instruction is used to turn on an output on for one scan cycle only. For example, this program is used to execute the add math function only once per actuation of the enable bit, no matter how long the enable bit is held closed. So, at this time, in the first program scan, which the enable bit is activated, the add instruction will be executed once time. Note that, it's no matter how long the enable bit is held closed. Alright, the one shot rising instruction, works similarly. It's need a storage bit memory, like one shot instruction, but, it accept another bit memory as its output. We can use this address, in another rung. Similarly, we can use one shot falling instruction. Here, it's output address, output underscore bit 3, will be on, only for one scan cycle, when this contact, change from 1 to 0. Well, let me define a project to use and learn bit instructions. I want to write a program to sort boxes based on their height. I'll use my processor and factory I.O. software, in this project. As you can see, here are a conveyor, a control box and a pusher which can push boxes. From here, some boxes enter the plant, and the conveyor move them. Boxes are small or large. Here a sensor which detect large boxes. So a small box will just go on this conveyor, but the bigger one will be pushed by this pusher on this chute conveyor. Well, how we can do that? First, let's design the desired plant in factory IO. If you remember, we turned on and off this conveyor, in one of the previous videos. Now, let's insert an emitter from the right list. Well, to change device's height, press V key on keyboard, and then change its height with mouse. Now right click and unmark these, just keep small and large box. Now let me move this control box. Now from the right list, insert a pusher. As you see, with this pusher we can push boxes. Also this pusher have two sensors. If the pusher is not extracted, its back limit sensor is on, and if I make it forward, its front limit sensor will be on. So these sensors will determine the pusher is extracted 100% or not. Now insert a diffuse sensor. When a box with enough height appears in front of the sensor, it will send a signal to PLC. 
so with this sensor we can detect large boxes. Now I want to insert two shoots conveyor. Now insert two removers at the end of each shoots. All right. We have inserted necessary equipment in factory I.O. software. Now, let's write the PLC program. If you remember, we used this program, to turn on off a conveyor, with real and virtual push buttons. Now, let me write a similar program to turn on off the belt conveyor, using latch and unlatch instructions. On the first rung, I want to use latch instruction, to turn on this digital output, with a real digital input, and a virtual digital input from the factory I.O. Now, I press Ctrl plus D to modify description of the selected digital output address. Similarly, let's use unlatch instruction, to turn off the belt conveyor. In the next rung, I use another latch instruction to turn on the second digital output. This output will be connected to the inserted pusher in factory I.O. software. Based on the defined project, when the used sensor detects a large box, the pusher must be activated. So, I use this tag, factory I.O.2. For this contact, I will connect this tag to the sensor in factory I.O. Note that, if a large box arrives here, the sensor will be activated. But the large box is not in front of the pusher. At this time, when the sensor signal returns to zero, the large box will be in front of the pusher and can be pushed. So, I need to use one shot falling instruction in my program. Alright, when the pusher is extracted 100%, its front limit switch is activated. I use this limit switch to turn off the pusher. Pay attention, until now, I have used the four first bits of the factory I.O. tag, factory I.O.0 to factory I.O.3, four push buttons and sensors, which are inserted in factory I.O. software. Now. Let's back to factory I.O. to connect inserted equipment to my controller. Based on my controller type, in this menu, I select Allen Bradley Logix 5000, then I click on configuration. Here I write my Ethernet module IP address. I can read that on this displayer. As you know, my CPU slot number is 1. Here, I determine input output addresses. For input devices, like push buttons, and sensors, I used factory I.O. tag in my program. 
so, I write this tag here. I used only four first digital bits of this tag in my program. Also, I used the first and second digital output. So, I write its address here. Let me change this number to 2, and other numbers to 0. Because I've not used any integer or floating data, in my program. Now, let me connect factory I.O. software using a LAN cable to my PLC. Finally, I must connect inserted equipment to my PLC. Pay attention, we have used stop and start push buttons, the diffuse sensor, and the pusher front limit. Also, we have used only a belt conveyor and pusher, as our outputs. Alright. Let's download the program to PLC. Before that, let me modify this contact. Because the related push button in factory I.O. software is normally close. Well, the program has been transferred to my processor, and inserted equipment in this plant is connected to my controller. So, let's test the project. First, I must change my controller mode, to run mode. As you see, I can use real push buttons to start stop the belt conveyor. Also, I can use these two start stop push buttons. I hope you enjoyed this video, in the next video, we are going to do another project, to learn how to work with timer instructions. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.